Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am talking about one of my favorite topics, Disney World. Specifically, I'm doing a whole video answering questions about fast passes. The fast pass system is something that has revolutionized the way my family tours Disney World. But I know that if you're a newcomer, if you've never visited or you've never used the fast pass system before, it might seem a little overwhelming. There's a lot to know about it. I did a Disney planning Q&A a couple weeks ago and I took the questions off Instagram. I put a call out to you guys saying, what do you want to know about planning a Disney trip. I got a bunch of different questions. I'll put a link below. A couple of you guys asked about fast passes and in that video I briefly explained what the fast pass system is but there was not time in that video to go in depth about how to use it, how to best use it, all the different tips and tricks. Uh, so I'm dedicating a full length video to that today. I have my notes here in front of me. Um, I do want to say a couple things before I start. One, this is going to be strictly about using fast passes at Disney World. It's a different system at Disneyland. I've visited Disneyland a few times but I am absolutely not expert enough on that system to do a whole video for you guys. Uh, but Disney World I absolutely know what I'm talking about so I definitely wanted to do this video on that. I also want to say that these rules and different strategies they are subject to change disney will change their fast pass system from time to time typically when they open a new headliner ride or a new land star wars land is opening later this year that's definitely going to change some stuff at disney hollywood studios what i'm outlining here it's probably the structure of it will stay true for years to come but if you're planning a trip to disney world definitely do a google search see if there's anything new you want to be in the know uh and then the number one thing i want to mention before I get started that I think not everybody really knows is that the FastPass system is completely free. It's free to use, uh, it's free to schedule, you get a magic band, the magic band is free, it's completely free. So if you are planning a trip to Disney World, I really encourage you, watch this video, learn about the system, try it out. Like I said before, this has completely changed the way we do Disney World for the better. That being said, Disney was previously using a paper fast pass system. I want to say the paper fast pass system came out, I think I was 13, I'm 35 now, so that's 22 years ago. Wow, I can't believe we've had it that long. So they were on the paper fast pass system and everybody got really used to it. And then a few years ago, they changed to this digital fast pass system. And right now, I think it's sort of a love it or hate it thing. Some people are totally into the change. Some people really liked the paper fast passes. But I will tell you, I am a huge advocate of how it is done now. I absolutely love the changes they've made. I'm going to explain to you why, but I think if you can learn this system and use it right, you can have a really like relaxing trip to Disney World. It's not going to be that that stress that you think of, of waiting in line for an hour and you're standing in the sun. So let's get started. I'm going to tell you the first thing you really need to know when you want to use the FastPass system is that you need to set up an account. If you want to do, if you want to book your fast passes ahead of time, there is an option to book fast passes day of in the park. You don't have to do any planning to do that. I'm going to get to how you do that later on. But if you want to set up your fast passes before you arrive, you need to make an account. And you're going to want to set up your fast passes before you arrive. I really think if you've not done it before, you should try it. It's so helpful. You're going to get those hard to get fast passes. The first thing you do is you set up an account. And the way you do that is you go onto the Disney website, DisneyWorld.com, and you just create an account. It's free to do. It's not difficult. You know, sometimes setting up an account for some of these big corporations, you have to give a lot of personal information. This is pretty basic. You don't have to give a credit card or anything like that. You just make a really basic account for yourself and they call this their My Disney Experience. So now you have a My Disney Experience account. I'm telling you make the um, account on the website. You can make it using an app. I find it easier to navigate on the website, but I do encourage you to, after you have made the account on the, My D on the Disney World website, Download the My Disney Experience app. I like to use them together. I find that it's easiest to actually make the fast passes on the My Disney Experience app. So you've made your account on the website, then you go into your app store, you download the My Disney Experience app. It's free to download, and now you're all set to go. You've got both. And then we're gonna talk about who can set up 
fast passes in advance and when. If you have a Disney World Resort reservation, so you're staying at a hotel for your trip, you can make your fast passes 60 days in advance. If you do not have a hotel reservation but you're visiting Walt Disney World, you can make your fast passes 30 days in advance. And now there's a difference between the two. The people staying on site who can make their reservations 60 days in advance, they can make them 60 days in advance for the length of their stay. Meaning once they're 60 days from their arrival date, they can make their fast passes for the next day of their trip, which would be, we call that 60 plus one for the second day, the third day, the fourth day. Uh, if you're going and you don't have a resort reservation, a hotel reservation, and you're doing yours 30 days in advance, you're going to be making yours 30 days in advance each day. So let's say you're going to Magic Kingdom on June 30th. On May 30th, you can make it for that Magic Kingdom day. And then if on the second day of your trip and you don't have a hotel reservation, you're going to Animal Kingdom on June 1st, say June 1st, on July 1st, then on June 1st, you can make it for that one. You have to keep doing it each day for the subsequent day of your trip if you don't have a hotel reservation. I hope you're still with me. So there's def that's definitely a perk to staying on site. You get that 60 day window and you can just do it once. You can make your fast passes for the entirety of your trip. The next most important thing you have to know about making fast passes in advance is that you have to already have purchased your Disney World tickets. If you have a hotel reservation and they know you're coming, but you haven't bought tickets, you cannot make fast passes. If you want to do the 30 day in advance fast passes, you absolutely have to have tickets. So you're going to buy your tickets and then you are going to link them to your My Disney Experience account. It's very simple to do. So once you have your ticket, either you purchased a paper ticket from a site, you've got your paper ticket, or you purchased it from Disney and they just sent you the confirmation number in an email, you're going to use that confirmation number and you're going to input that into your account. There's a whole tab that talks about linking tickets. You're linking your tickets to your account. Once you have those, you're good to go. Uh, so again, the, you'll have the resort reservation and your ticket for 60 days in advance, or you'll have no resort reservation but a ticket and you can make your fast passes 30 days in advance. Now, once you're up to your window, so you're at your time when you are allowed to make fast passes, whether that's 60 days or 30 days, you can make them at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if that sounds like a silly detail to know, then let me explain. The people who are planning these trips, they absolutely wake up 6.55 a.m. and they are ready. I am one of those people. So it definitely behooves you if you're trying to, you know, get your ducks in a row and you're, you're definitely waking up on that day to make them be there for the 7 a.m. start because some of those hard to get fast passes, they really go quickly. So do the 7 a.m. I know that might sound a little painful if you're on the West Coast, but it's just one time and you'll be happy you did it, I promise. Uh, and then when you're making your fast passes, you're going to want to make them for your whole party. So I'm not just making them for myself. I'm going to be making them for the people I'm traveling with. And that's easy to do if maybe it's people you bought tickets for, you know, your spouse and your child, you've already got those linked together, but you can also link parties. So let's say you're traveling with extended family. You've got your My Disney Experience account that you've already set up and you've linked your tickets, you've linked your spouse's tickets. You can now link your account to maybe your parents, maybe your grandma and grandpa are coming with you, or maybe your sister-in-law's family is coming. You can easily link accounts. That's another another tab about linking accounts. And it, when you go in to make your fast passes, it's going to ask who's in your traveling party, and you can choose from all the people in your traveling party, all your family members that you've told Disney, these are my people, so that you can make them as a group, and you know that you're all going to be able to ride the rides at the same time together. You don't have to worry about telling your sister-in-law, oh, I got Peter Pan for 1 p.m., make sure you get Peter Pan for 1 p.m. It's much easier this way. Uh, I'm linked to a lot of my friends, <laughs> a lot of people I'm linked to, because Often when I'm traveling, the people I'm traveling with want me to just handle the fast passes. So this is actually a really good um, reason why you want to set up your My Disney Experience account in advance. Have this all sorted out. Know that your tickets are already all in there so that at 7 a.m., 60 days out, you can wake up and you can make your fast passes. Once you've got that all settled, it's time to actually choose your fast passes, right? And this is gonna be a, a whole other thing. People have different opinions. I'm gonna tell you my opinions on which ones to get, but first I'm gonna tell you about tiering. So um, some of the parks, well now most of the parks have what they call tiering for their fast passes. The Magic Kingdom has no tiering. So what that means is when you wake up and you're making your fast passes for your Magic Kingdom day, 
you can pick three any rides you want the whole of the magic kingdom you can get space mountain splash mountain thunder mountain pick any three you want when you're doing your advanced fast passes you can pick three at a time if you are going to epcot animal kingdom or hollywood studios they have a tiering system for their fast passes which means they consider certain attractions to have just a higher demand so they put them in their own separate tier and you cannot have two fast passes from the top tier so for example right now at epcot the top tier rides are frozen the new frozen ride frozen ever after soren and test track and then i think there's um a mickey mouse greet that might be tier one and illuminations the fireworks might be tier one but strictly let's just talk about the rides so frozen Soren and Test Track are all tier one, meaning you can only pick one of those. So let's say I pick Frozen, and you, I said I told you you can pick three in advance. So now you can pick two from the second tier. So those would be things like Spaceship Earth, Living with the Land, the Figment Ride. So that's important to know because if you're visiting a park that has the tiering system, and like I said, three out of four have the tiering now. It wasn't always that way, but now three out of four have the tiering. You need to know what your priorities are so you know okay we have to get this one from this tier uh and then we'll get the others from this tier so uh like i said at the magic kingdom you can pick any three my recommendations would be your rides like snow white's um the seven dwarfs mine train that's the that's the accurate name right the seven dwarfs mine train that is absolutely the hardest to get fast pass at magic kingdom right now so if you want to ride that definitely pick that one up it's a really family friendly roller coaster a seven-year-old can go on it grandma can go on i think that's why it has such demand also at magic kingdom peter pan space mountain thunder mountain splash mountain those are all ones that are pretty good idea to get in advance if you have the option um we're going to talk about after you use in a little bit we're going to talk about after you've used up those three how to get more because you absolutely can get more than three after you've used your original three but so if you're at magic kingdom pick from that group if you are going to epcot like i said frozen test track soren those are your top tier options um if if your family wants to visit all three of those if those are all important to you i would suggest getting the frozen fast pass um and then hitting up soren really early in the morning they've added a new theater to soren so it doesn't get the long lines it used to so get your frozen fast pass Get in line for Soren early in the morning when it has a low weight and then ride Test Track Single Rider. Some of these rides have a single rider option, meaning you get in it and they pull you out one by one and they fill up ride cars. It means you're going to be separated from your party. If you're traveling with a six-year-old and you can't be separated from him, don't do the single rider line. Then I would suggest get the fast pass for test track that gets a really long line and then hit frozen really first thing in the morning when the line's not too bad and then keep looking throughout the day at soren on your my disney experience app it'll tell you the wait times and you can see when the wait is not too bad for soren that's what i would suggest there um at animal kingdom i would definitely suggest a flight of passage fast pass flight of passage is probably the hardest fast pass to get right now some people would say Slinky Dog Dash, but I still think Flight of Passage is the hardest one to get. So if you're visiting Animal Kingdom, your tier one options are Flight of Passage, which is in the new Avatar Land, and Navi River Journey, which is also in Avatar Land. So it's just the two Avatar rides that are tier one. You have to pick one or the other. You can't get a fast pass for both. So if you want to ride both, get the Flight of Passage fast pass. And then your second tier options are things like Everest, Kilimanjaro Safaris, Dinosaur, Cali River Rapids, any two from those tiers are going to be great. If you want to ride all of those, get Flight of Passage Tier 1, and then as your Tier 2, I would get Everest and the Safari Ride, and then kind of rope drop early in the morning the other stuff to cut down on your weight. And then at Disney Hollywood Studios, um, the Tier 1 rides right now are all the Toy Story rides. So last year, Disney Hollywood Studios opened up Toy Story Land. There's three rides, Slinky Dog Dash, Toy Story Mania, and Alien Swirling Saucers. Each three of those are tier one. If you have to pick one of those, absolutely pick Slinky Dog Dash. Like I just said, some people would say Slinky Dog Dash is the hardest fast pass to get. It's neck and neck with Flight of Passage. So try to get that Slinky Dog Dash. And then for your tier two, I would get Rock and Roller Coaster and Tower of Terror. Um, those are really great tier two options. And then again, I would try to do Toy Story 
mania and alien swirling saucers early in the morning before the lines get too long or a really great option is to do them late at night right before closing rides like that don't have long lines so that that's my tips on tiering um and again i'm going to talk later about after you've used those three how to get more and then something else i want to talk about is concierge level last year i think it was last year disney started a new program where if you're staying concierge level at one of their resorts you can actually get more fast passes so i know i said that the system is free to use this is the one exception if you're staying concierge um, you can pay to get extra fast passes and you have to pay per person per day and you, I believe you have to get this program for a minimum of three days. And I want to say, I want to say it's $150 per person. It's pretty pricey. And you have to get it for each member of your party per day. Um, I haven't used this service. I've never seen a need to. I've always been able to get what I want using the free system. Uh, but that's a whole other area. If you, if your family likes to say concierge at Disney World anyway, it's something to look into. Do a Google search. A lot of articles have been written about it. I know a lot of people love this service. If you don't go to Disney World very often and your kids, you know, you really want to make sure they get to see X, Y, and Z, you don't have much time, it might be a good option for you. So that is the pay fast pass system, but everything else is free. And if you don't want to pay um, the extra cost, you really can get a good value out of this free system. So now I have talked about getting your fast passes in advance. I'm going to talk to you if you do not want to make your fast passes in advance or some people don't like buying their tickets in advance. Some people like showing up and buying their ticket and then entering there. And great. If that's how your family likes to travel, you still can do the fast pass system. You just can't do it in advance. You have to do it when you show up at the parks. So the way you do that is you've got your ticket in hand, you enter the parks. Throughout the parks there's going to be fast pass kiosks and it's going to be marked with like an FP plus. There'll be a sign. It's indicated on your guide map. If you can't find these kiosks, ask a cast member, somebody who works there. That's what they're called, cast members, and they'll direct you. And so there's this kiosk. You go up, you scan your ticket, and it'll show you your options and you can start picking and people will be there working the kiosk they can walk you through it so you can still get these fast pass um you just can't get them in advance and so the way it happens once you now have your fast passes set up what you have is you have a reservation to get in line and skip the standby wait and i mean this is brilliant some of these rides they will get upwards of three hour long waits in the middle of july and if you have the fast pass you walk right by that you have your own separate entrance you walk in right up i mean some you'll wait a little bit maybe 10 minutes maybe 15 minutes if it's a three hour line it might be a 15 minute uh, fast pass line but it's going to be really really short and save you a lot of time I talked about using the kiosks and scanning your ticket. I'm going to talk to you now about entering with a magic band, which is what this is, versus your actual ticket. Uh, if you've never used magic bands before, it might be a little confusing. You can enter your fast pass line at your given time using your ticket or your magic band. Uh, if the magic band confuses you and you just want to use your ticket, that's fine. There's a little turnstile with a little Mickey head and you tap your ticket and you can go on through. But I love using the magic band. It's really convenient. And like I said earlier, it is free. So the way the magic band works is this is linked to your My Disney Experience account. Once you set one up, this is going to be good to go for years. I have old magic bands, even though I'm on a new trip or I'm on a new ticket, the magic band is linked to you. It's not linked to a hotel reservation or a ticket reservation. This knows you. It knows who you are. It's a little creepy, I guess, but um, this can be your, it's your ticket entering your hotel room. You can scan your wristband and get right into your hotel room. You can charge things on this. If you want, you can set it up so that you can pay for your soda and your ice cream using this. It's really great. Uh, if you buy the photo pass, I love the photo pass system at Disney. This knows where you are. If you are on a ride, if you're on Splash Mountain and it takes a picture of you, it shows up because it's, it's tracking you with this. Again, a little creepy, but um, it's really great and it is free. So if you have a hotel reservation, Disney will send you these for each member of your party for 
for free. The way you do that is you go into your My Disney Experience account and you can go in and customize it for each member of your party. You can pick what color each person wants um, and then they actually mail it to your home and they mail it to you for free. If you have a hotel reservation and you don't set this all up in advance when you show up at your hotel to check in, they will actually have these magic bands waiting for you again for free. They won't be customized to your color preferences, but I encourage you to go online and look into setting it up because it's free, it's fun, you can pick your colors and like I said you get one for every single every time you have a hotel reservation for each time you go they'll set this up for you and send you another free magic band and I like to customize them you put your name you tell it what your name is and they print it on the back here and uh, you can pick new names you know so when I went with my daughter for the first time uh, my husband and I took her I made sure my husband and I we had magic bands that said mommy and daddy um, I'm going in a few weeks with my sister to celebrate her high school graduation and I got hers to say high school graduate so it's a really fun little memory uh, and like I said free and everybody gets to pick their favorite color and you can reuse them and they'll always send you more however if you're if you've noticed in the parks and the stores you'll see magic bands for sale they have a ton of patterns and unique colors and things they're constantly putting out specialty magic bands to buy i've bought a few you can buy them there's free ones have fun go wow i love the i love the magic band system okay okay so i talked about um that you show up at a certain time. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the times for your for your fast pass and how you show up and what to do. So let's say I've got a Peter Pan fast pass for 12 to 1 p.m. You show up anytime during that window and you get on. Now I said during that window there is a buffer. Um, you know it's this isn't a loophole. It's not a trick. It's not taking advantage of anything. But Disney does give you as a courtesy a little window on either time where on at the end of e that hour on both sides where you'll scan your magic band and you'll still get through just fine and I'm only telling you this because I don't want you to stress out you know a lot of us are traveling with kids things happen you stop for a water a bathroom break somebody has a meltdown don't stress out if you're sitting on the monorail and you see the minutes going by and you're like oh we're gonna miss Peter Pan don't worry you're gonna be okay they give you a five minute um, opening at the start of your hour so like I said if you had that Peter Pan fast pass for noon to 1 at 11 55 a.m. it's gonna stand, scan green if you scanned it at 11 56 it's gonna let you in likewise you have a 15 minute window at the end of that hour so if the window was 12 to 1 it's still gonna be showing up green when you scan it at 1 14 you know don't take advantage of it it's it's there to help you out because things happen and Disney knows that but I wanted to mention that so that you do not panic if you're running a little late like I said things happen the kids are there slowing us down everybody understands um, so I've t I told you that you can make your three fast passes in advance but after you've used those up you can make as many fast passes as your heart desires as are available for the rest of the day so let's say I made three fast passes in the Magic Kingdom for the morning and I've used them all up I can now make a fourth one so what I would do is I would pull out my phone I would go in my Ma my Disney experience app and I would start looking and see what's available uh, and then I would pick a fourth fast pass maybe I picked a fourth fast pass for Haunted Mansion that starts in 30 minutes I go over there I enter the line for Haunted Mansion I scan my magic band and then I can go on I haven't even gotten on the ride yet right I've just scanned to get in line I can now go back to the app and I can look for a fifth fast pass and so on and so on sorry about that I made some more room on my card so this works great at the Magic Kingdom when there are a ton of attractions you can keep getting more and more and more um, I do want to mention that if you plan to use the writer swap system, that is for people who maybe you've got yourself and your husband and you've got a child, a two-year-old who can't ride the roller coaster, Disney doesn't penalize you. Disney lets you wait in line once, your husband will go on, you wait with the baby, you get this little card that's the writer swap card, he gets off the ride, you give him the baby, and you get right back on using that writer swap card without having to wait again. If you're going to take advantage of writer swap, you only need a magic band, um, you only need a fast pass for one of the people, so maybe get the fast pass for your husband for Space Mountain, and Disney does this so that you can then get a fast pass for maybe Buzz Lightyear. You take the child on the ride, and then he gets that writer swap card, you switch out, you don't both have to have the fast pass 
for that ride that you intend to use the rider swap option for. It's really great for families, uh, like I said, so that you can still take the little one on a ride without a wait. So now I think I've covered the basics of how to use the fast pass, what it is, and I want to give you some of my tips. Uh, like I said, I've used this over and over. I love the fast pass system and I definitely have some tips and tricks that I use. Um, the first thing I want to say is if you have planned everything, you've gotten up 60 days in advance and you want to get that flight of passage, fast pass, and you can't get it, it's all gone, don't panic and don't look relentlessly every day up until your trip. If you cannot get one in advance for a ride you want, the best thing to do is wait until just a few days before you go. So maybe two days before for your Animal Kingdom day, start looking for that flight of passage fast pass again. The reason being that's when people are gonna start custom are gonna start changing their plans. That's when people say, oh, you know, we're gonna be tired that day, I don't feel like that. It's gonna be right up to when that date is. So just a few days before, start looking relentlessly for those fast passes you weren't able to get. If you're looking and looking and looking and you can't get what you want, consider other things like splitting up your group. So if I need four seven dwarf mine train fast passes and I can't find it, I might start looking for two. Uh, and I'll get two for 1 p.m. and see if I can get two for 1.30 p.m. Great if you can find an overlapping time. Um, but if you split up, sometimes it can be a hard for a party of seven or eight. If you split it into smaller groups, sometimes you can find those uh, fast passes that you want. Another great thing, it's called the refresh method. Um, I'm gonna just mime for you. So like, let's say you're on your app and you're walking around the Magic Kingdom and you check and you can't find anything. Some people will say, oh well, and put their phone away. But what you wanna do is keep refreshing. So let's say I was in the app and I looked for 2 p.m and I didn't see what I wanted, move your finger over and now press 3 p.m. and then see if something pops up that you like. And if it doesn't go back to 2 p.m., this is considered refresh. So there's not an actual refresh button on the FastPass app, but you just keep keep pressing different times and it'll keep it'll keep refreshing the system and keep drawing up new fast passes. And do this just over and over. If you do this for two minutes, you are almost always going to find what you are looking for, I promise you. I, I, that might sound so simple, but I, I don't think it's obvious when you're looking to everybody to like keep going at it. But if you just try for a few minutes, keep refreshing. Don't try once, see that there's not what you want and give up. Keep refreshing. Um, and then another thing I wanted to uh, talk about is if you have a tough to get fast pass, like Flight of, flight of Passage, Slinky Dog Dash, plan those fast passes for later in your trip. If you're going for six days, Put your hardest to get fast passes at the end of the trip. Make your Animal Kingdom day toward the end. If you make it for day one and you wake up at 7 a.m. 60 days out, all the fast passes might be gone for that earlier day in your trip. But if you look for later in your trip, you're probably going to find more availability. Um, and oh, and then another thing I want to talk about is what what part of your day you should plan your fast passes for. So if I'm going to Magic Kingdom, I like to book my fast passes early in the morning. I don't know why I said if, I, if I'm going to Magic Kingdom, any park I'm going to, I'm trying to make my fast passes for early in the morning because I want to use them up so I can start getting that fourth and fifth and sixth fast pass. If you make your fast passes for the afternoon, and some people do this thinking I'm going to go in the morning and I'm going to ride the rides in the morning with low weights and then I'm going to make my fast passes for the afternoon when it's crowded, that's great, but then you're probably only gonna get three fast passes. I think a better strategy, make them in the morning, maybe late morning. Uh, let's say I plan to rope drop the park I'm at, meaning I'm gonna be there at 8.30 a.m. for a 9 a.m. opening. For the first hour or two, I'm gonna be able to get on a lot of stuff without lines, but I'm still gonna make a fast pass for maybe 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. I'm gonna make my second fast pass for 11 a.m. to noon, and my third for noon to one. And that, that means almost the first two hours of nine to 11 a.m., I can ride stuff without the fast pass. And then my first fast pass, I said I probably made it for 10 to 11 a.m. I'm gonna get on that line, maybe 10.55 a.m., right before the end of my window, and get on a ride, get off it, and once I get off, the next fast pass window has opened up, that 11 a.m. to noon time ride that and then I'm gonna get online for my third fast pass ride which I had scheduled for noon to one I'm gonna get on it right at noon and that way in just one hour I used three fast passes I used them real quick used them up and now it's 
12.10, even though that fast pa that third fast pass time window was noon to one, it's 12.10, I've used it up, it's gone now, I can start looking for a fourth, and it's not even lunchtime. And that way I'm gonna have all afternoon, all evening to keep getting more fast passes. Don't save them for later, because then you're probably only gonna get to use a few. So, I think that's it. I think I covered everything I wanted to talk to you guys about. Please let me know in the comments though if you have a question about fast passes that I did not answer. Obviously it's a topic that I like talking about. And let me know in the comments if there's something else you want to talk about. Like I said, I did this after I put out a call for questions from you guys on Instagram. I'll leave my Instagram below so we can do more of this. Please visit me there. And I want to hear what you guys want to know because it gives me ideas for future videos. I love talking about Disney World. I would love to do more planning videos for you. I've already got ideas for some other full length videos I want to do Disney topics on. So definitely hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of these future videos. I've got a ton of ideas. I'm really loving talking to you guys about all things Disney. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.